Brought to you by... Hey friends, welcome back to Embrace the Film. Today, we imagine the gravity of discovering a secret that threatens to tear your idyllic life apart. We ask the question, what would you do if you learned that someone you were close to, that you looked up to, who guided and nurtured you, carried with them a darkness deep within that made them capable of acts beyond imagining? Today we begin an investigation into the Clove Hitch Killer. We begin this tale as a shocking revelation turns a teenage boy's world upside down, taking a chilling look at the evil that can lurk below even the most wholesome surface. Tyler Burnside is a boy scout, a volunteer at his local church, and the dutiful son of an upstanding community leader. Only one thing troubles the quiet Kentucky town that he lives in. The unsolved murders in which 10 women were brutally tortured and killed by a psychopath known as Clove Hitch that rocked the community more than a decade ago. When Tyler discovers a cache of disturbing images in his father's possession, he begins to suspect that the man he trusts most in the world may be the Clove Hitch killer, and that his deadly rampage may not be over. With unrelenting tension, director Duncan Skiles crafts a picture-perfect vision of an all-American family, and then piece by piece, rips it to shreds. It's not too often that we see a true-to-form crime story that realistically depicts the violent atrocities that we enact upon one another. This one ranks up with the best of them, crafting a fictional whodunit mystery account that bases itself closely to the real-world crimes of Dennis Rader, more well known to the masses as BTK. Playing out much like David Fincher's account of the Zodiac murders, this film crafts a unique detective style narrative that places two young kids on the trail of a repressed murderer. Dylan McDermott always brings something special, however small, to each role that he undertakes. He embodies each character with some small details that help sell his performances and ground them in a form of realism, making it pretty easy for us to accept his portrayal. Here we see him embody a wholesome everyman, a loving husband, a nurturing father, and a resilient community leader. The type of man who you would look up to and for lack of a better term, idolize. He is stern yet comforting, a deeply religious man, leader of his son's Cub Scout troop, and a prominent, engaging, and helpful member of the community. However, behind each comforting smile and within every polite wave, there remains something off-putting behind his eyes that sort of sets us as the audience rooted into a well of unease. We watch him make a gradual shift in his tone and personality, bleeding flawlessly from kind and wholesome to rigid and sinister. McDermott is an actor that I feel doesn't get a lot of credit for his performances, but in my opinion would do well if given the chance to thrive in the right roles. The film is shot in a predictably standard camera style, that while taking few risks, grounds the film in a simplistic reality. It keeps things slow, taking its time to draw out the moments that matter, and leads us through the narrative structure. And while simple, still remains to be visually engaging. The film paces itself slow, and it's in this slow pace that the formation of its editing allows for some very interesting techniques to come to play. Toward the latter half of the film, we are afforded the opportunity to see the same series of events from two separate perspectives. This makes for a very interesting look into the characters, allowing us to follow along with the antagonist for a period of time before witnessing his downfall. Judging solely by my interpretation of the material, this became a story structured around the concept of discovering what people are capable of, whether it be ourselves or those closest to us. 
In the film's final moments, we watch as Tyler is, in a way, forced to become a killer to stop a killer. To realize and accept that he too plays host to a touch of the darkness that dwells within his father. We never truly know what intent lies behind another person, what darkness they hold back from the rest of society. Despite the fact that we may live within close proximity to them, share a dinner table with them, or have been raised by them, it's when we dig into the places that we know that we aren't prepared to go, that we are able to discover the truth. Not only about what secrets someone else tries to keep buried, but the limits in which we ourselves are capable. I'm giving The Clovefish Killer a B+. I don't feel that this film had any real faults to speak of. It will likely appeal to any fans of true crime dramas or mystery narratives, and it will definitely capture the intrigue of those who are fascinated by the actions of BTK. At the time of this review, the film is available to stream on both Hulu and Amazon Instant. I definitely recommend checking it out if you have the time. Almost there, bud. If you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to let me know. It's just a quick scroll down there to that comment section below. If you're enjoying the channel more than words can describe, shoot me a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. If you'd like to show your support even more, come find ETF on Patreon or Tippy, where every pledge and every tip brings you rewards galore. Not to mention allowing me to bring you more films to explore. But all jokes and rhymes aside, if you have any films that you would like me to check out, or that you might like to see reviewed on this channel, feel free to reach out to me here down in the comments, or over on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And I will catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.